Hello, today we'll start with module 1 which is applications of derivatives or differentiation. Now our first topic is intervals. Now intervals are of many types. Let's start with the open interval. The open interval is written in this general form where you have a round bracket a comma b close the round bracket. Your a is the lower value, b is the higher value. Now what does an open interval mean? An open interval means that if I consider a value x between a and b then x can be any value between a and b, it can be negative, it can be a fraction or a decimal but it cannot be equal to a or it cannot be equal to b so it can be written in this format where I say a is lower than x, b is greater than x and x lies in between but it's not equal to a or b then you have the closed interval, the closed interval is represented using square brackets over here I say if x is a number between a and b then x can be equal to a and b so again similar way your a is lesser than or equal to x, your b is greater than or equal to x and x is a number lying between a and b or equal to a or equal to b. Then you have a finite interval. A finite interval is when a and b have finite values. Over here we have the first example closed interval minus half comma 3 by 4 open interval. This means whatever function has this domain I say that function includes minus half but it excludes 3 by 4 and this I have taken as an example to show that an interval can have a negative value as well as a decimal value within it and the open and closed intervals are, or the closed and open intervals depend on the question given over here is another example with two closed intervals 10 comma 27 here you have the infinite interval where we say either a or b or both is an infinite value but we know a is the lower value so we say a is negative infinity and we know b is the higher value so we say b is equal to infinity so here's a, here are a few examples where I say negative infinity to infinity negative infinity to 27 0 to infinity now a little call back we know that a finite interval can have an open or oh sorry an open or a closed interval over here an infinite value will always have an open interval since infinity does not have a properly defined value hence you say you can never have a variable x lying between a and b such that x equals infinity so or infinity or negative infinity both are represented with open intervals only moving on to the absolute or global extrema let us consider a function f with a domain d so there is a function f with domain d, d is the values of x which for which we are using the function. So let f have a maxima at a point c in domain d. So for some value of c, if we put it in f, we get a max point where the maximum value is achieved. That's your maxima. So for the absolute maxima at c in domain d, we use this equation as a condition. We say your f of x, so for any value of x lying in d, your value of f of x should be lesser than or equal to the value of f of c. In a similar way, we can say the absolute minimum will occur when minimum or minima will occur when f of x is greater than or equal to f of c for all values of x belonging to d. This basically means that your c is giving the lowest value of your f of c. So here we can take the example of y equals x square for the domain negative infinity to infinity. That means we are considering values of x from negative infinity to infinity which is basically the entire x axis. Over here we can construct a graph and we can directly tell the minimum is 0 from the graph and the maximum will be at when x reaches infinity. So we can verify our findings from the graph using this method we say absolute minimum is at x equals 0 so we put the value of x as 0 over here we get y equals 0 square so y equals 0 in a similar way we say absolute maximum is for x equals infinity but since x as infinity does not have a properly defined value we say that the maximum does not exist because x if you put x as infinity we get y as infinity squared which is infinity only since there is no defined value for infinity, we say that there is no defined maximum. The next example is y equals x square for x belonging to domain 0, 2. Over here we can say the absolute minimum is at x equals 0, absolute maximum is at x equals 2. 
we can confirm the absolute maximum for this domain is at x equals 2 by substituting 2 in this formula we get y equals 2 square which is 4 if we had the domain minus 2 comma 2 then our minimum will be at 0 but our maximum will be at x equals plus or minus 2 because even if we put minus 2 over here we will get y equals 4 which is our maximum here we have y equals x square for x belonging to domain open interval 0 comma 2 over here since we have an open interval we say 0 does not count for this particular domain hence since 0 is not counting we say absolute minimum does not exist for the given domain in the same way we say the maximum is 4 for x equals 2 just put 2 in here you get y equals 4 that's your maximum value the last example is y equals x square for x belonging to d from 0 to 2 now over here it's both open intervals so we say 0 and 2 are not included in this particular domain hence y hence y equals 0 is not a minimum and y equals 4 is not a maximum since we are not considering it so no absolute extrema exists now what if we get a function over here we easily plotted the graph and we can tell from the graph okay if we put x equals 2 we get y is 4 what if we get a function for which we can't draw the graph we'll see how we solve those functions for the absolute extrema in the next video